Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to Karen Sizzlin' Spice. It's August now and the tomatoes are abundant everywhere. Whether you get them from your own garden, your farmer's market, or your regular supermarket, tomatoes are abundant all over. All different kinds of tomatoes. Would you look at these from my garden? They are incredible. So I've decided to make a tomato pie today. And there's a couple of tricks to make this. You don't want a soggy tomato pie, but this is just gonna be delicious. So of course, we're gonna need our tomatoes to start. We're gonna need some mayonnaise. We'll be using some sharp cheddar mixed with some Monterey Jack, but you can fool around with the cheeses and use other flavors of cheese if you like. We're gonna use one sweet Vidalia onion. We're gonna be using a deep dish nine inch pie crust. This one is frozen. You can make your own if you like, but I just grabbed one from the freezer section. I'll need salt and pepper, and I'll need some of my basil for my garden. Look how gorgeous this is. I've already washed it and dried it. It's ready to go. Let's get this started. The first thing we're going to do to get this one started is I'm going to get my oven on to 375 because we need to pre-bake our crust for about 10 minutes. While that's heating up, I'm going to cut up my tomatoes. And uh, I'm gonna cut them pretty small. We don't want big chunks of tomato in this recipe. And what I'm gonna do is, I'll probably use about, oh, we'll see, maybe four or five tomatoes. It'll depend on your size of tomatoes as well. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna put these tomatoes into this uh, strainer right here. Because uh, we're gonna let these drain for a while. This is why I'm doing this one of the first things for this recipe. We're gonna let them drain into the bowl. So I'm just gonna keep cutting my tomatoes. And again, uh, probably about four. These tomatoes are pretty big. I'll be right back after I get all these cut up. Friends, my oven just went off, so it's ready to go. What I wanna do with this prepared pie crust is I wanna give it some good pokes here because we don't want this to rise up. We want it to remain pretty flat. We're just gonna brown this for about 10 minutes in the oven, again at 375. If you find that it's in the oven and it's ballooning up, take it out, poke some more, it'll flatten. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven right on the rack and I'll set my timer for 10 minutes and then we'll check it to see how it's doing. Then I'm gonna come back to my tomatoes here. I ended up using four good sized tomatoes and you can see I've put them all into this strainer here. Now we wanna get out as much water as we can from these. So you can see already, look in the bowl, how much juice has already come out. And actually, you know what you could do with that juice? You could make it for a beginning of your salad dressing. If you just use that tomato juice with maybe a little balsamic, some olive oil, salt and pepper, it would taste fantastic on vegetables or on a salad. But what I wanna do now is to make these drier so they're not so wet. I'm taking two paper towels and I'm gonna kinda of smash this down a little bit. There, I can hear it dripping on the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sprinkle these with some salt because the salt will help them to drain as well. It'll help the juices to drain from here. So I'm just putting some salt in there. I'm just gonna to toss them up a little bit like this. And then I'm going to take a couple more paper towels. Let me grab them over here and we're gonna smash this again a little bit. 
And then I'm gonna put this bowl aside, let it drain a while while the crust is baking, and I'll move on to the next step. I'm just putting a nonstick pan on a medium flame, and I'm gonna get this ready with a little bit of butter in my pan to caramelize my onions. I have to tell you, this sweet onion, this sweet Vidalia that I got at the market the other day, we have this favorite market that we go to many Sundays. It, you can smell. I mean, smell that, Eddie. <laughs> oh, yeah. It smells sweet. This is really my favorite onion, and this one is right directly from the farm. So I'm just going to slice these nice and thin. It's really important to have, sh have sharp knives when you're doing this. These Rachel Ray knives that you've seen me using a hundred times are incredible. So sharp. I love the sure grip on here. It's a nice rubber grip. And uh, I cannot believe how reasonably priced they are. It's a set of uh, three knives. They're incredible. I'll put the link for that on the description of this video in case you're looking to improve your kitchen. Or you just need good, good sharp knives. These are incredible. Okay, let's see my butter here. It's going good. Now, if you've never caramelized onions before, when you caramelize them, they get nice and sweet and soft and a beautiful shade of brown. So you can't go fast with this. It's kind of low and slow. So as you move your onions over, just take your fingers and kind of break them apart. This might take a good 20, 25 minutes. Again, that's why this is one of the first things I'm doing to get this dish started. Low and slow. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit now and I'm just gonna let them simmer away here. The kitchen's gonna smell divine. Friends, look at this salt and pepper shaker. This is my most favorite one yet. My daughter was so sweet. She knows how much I love gadgets in the kitchen. And she found me these salt and pepper shakers. They have batteries in them. They light up at night and they grind by themselves. Look at how this works. Watch how it comes out of there. As soon as you turn it over, it starts coming out. I love these things. They're so much fun. There's the pepper. All right, we're gonna leave these simmering here. I'm gonna leave the link for those on my uh, description of this video. These would make such a fantastic gift for any of your favorite chefs, even if that chef is you. Every few minutes, just give these onions a little stir. Like I said, it'll take probably about 20 minutes for them to start getting brown, and I'll certainly show you what that looks like. Look at these Rachel Ray spoons. I love these things. They're called her lazy spoons. Looks right on the side of the pan. So friends, I ended up baking my pie crust <laughs> about 15 minutes. It's just starting to get a nice golden brown. Keep in mind that we'll be baking it more once I put it all together, so you don't wanna go too far with it. Now I am gonna put it on a cookie sheet. I would not risk putting this in the oven without because it's probably gonna bubble up and overflow. And I don't know about you guys, but I use lots of parchment paper in my kitchen. I cut it to size for my cookie sheet. I just give it a few sprays of nonstick spray so the paper won't go anywhere. It just makes for so much easier cleaning. And I know someone who's very appreciative of that. He's my dishwasher, my sous chef, my husband and my best friend, that's Eddie. Thanks, Eddie. You're welcome. He says that when I cook all this good food, it's worth it to him. He doesn't mind doing the dishes at all. So I'm gonna put my my uh, crust right here on this and we're ready to go for the next step. You can see the onions are starting to turn a little bit brown there. So I actually just turned the heat down a little bit because low and slow is the trick to this and adding a little bit more butter. The butter will encourage that beautiful brownness. So my onions are caramelizing low and slow. My tomatoes are still draining here on the counter. Those are gonna be ready to go. My pie crust is over here, that's ready to go. Now I'm gonna just cut up a couple more ingredients. 
I'm gonna start with basil. I have basil in my garden. Uh, so I'm gonna use a good handful here and I'm actually gonna chiffon on the basil. If you don't have fresh basil, you can get fresh basil at the market, but even dried basil would be fine for this. I would use about a half a teaspoon of dried basil because remember when you use dried herbs, much, much stronger than your fresh herbs. And if you watched my last video, you could see that because I dried some basil and you can hardly believe a cookie sheet full overflowing with basil when it's fresh and then when you dry it, it's like quite minute. So it's very, very concentrated. So I'm gonna show you how to chiffonade the basil and it's really very simple. You just put it in a pile and then you roll it up like this and then you cut across it. What this creates is these beautiful ribbons of basil. And uh, if you guys know anything about me, you know how much I love basil. Look how pretty that is, the chiffon out of basil. As I'm chiffonating this basil, I'm just laughing to myself and I was just telling Eddie, my granddaughters were over yesterday. They are six and three and they love going in my vegetable garden with me and I've got them loving basil as much as I do. So yesterday I gave them each a piece of basil from the garden and they were smelling it for hours. Ooh, it smells so good, Grandma. <laughs> Just made me laugh. Uh, it's so much fun sharing gardening information with the grandkids. Hopefully they will develop a love for it as much as I have. Uh, friends, we're gonna add a wonderful cheese mixture to the top of this pie that's gonna turn brown and bubbly and delicious. And it's very simple to make. I'm just gonna mix about two cups of cheese. And again, you can choose what you like, but I'm gonna use sharp cheddar mixed with a Monterey Jack. So we want about two cups of cheese total. So that's about a cup. And then I'm going to uh, grate up some a Monterey Jack that I have. This will be about a cup as well. Okay, so now that I have my Monterey Jack cut up, I'm gonna add it to my cheddar cheese here. And then I'm gonna add about, so we got about two cups of cheese in here. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of mayo and we're gonna give this a stir and I'll show you the consistency that it should be. It should be kind of like a, maybe a soggy snowball, <laughs> something like that. And it should be able to mix easily because I'm gonna to have to spread this onto the top of the tomato pie. We need a little bit more. Wait till you see what this does on top of this tomato pie. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. There we go. That looks pretty perfect. Now that we have all our ingredients ready to go, uh, we're just gonna give those caramelized onions a couple more minutes and then we're gonna put this fantastic pie together. Now that I've got this cheese mixture mixed perfectly, I am gonna add a little more pepper to this, mostly because I love my new pepper grinder. <laughs> I love pepper flavor on tomatoes. So I have all my ingredients ready to layer this tomato pie. I did turn my oven down just now to 350 for baking this tomato pie. And look at these onions. They are beautifully caramelized. They're the first thing that I'm gonna put into my pie crust here. Ugh, you smell those onions, Eddie. They smell great. Man, when you caramelize them, it's a whole different thing from an, a raw onion. Ugh, these are fantastic. Let me spread these out real evenly in the pie crust. And the next thing I'm gonna put in here, I think I'll put in the basil next. My chiffon out of basil. I'm gonna save a little bit of it for the top as well. Oh, how I love me some basil. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Okay, now I'm gonna put the tomatoes in. Let me get a good sized spoon. 
you see these tomatoes? Look at all the juice in the bottom here. Like I said, you can use that for a wonderful vinaigrette. Ugh, the smell. I love the smell of tomatoes in the summer. One of my very favorite things about the summer, tomatoes. Love it. Look at how gorgeous this is. Now I ended up using four pretty good sized tomatoes. I'm not quite sure if I'll use all of it. I don't want this to overflow too much. I honestly don't mind if it does a little bit because I'm, I'm gonna have it on this cookie sheet. So that won't be a problem, but look at how gorgeous that is. Ooh, <laughs> what do you think, Eddie? You'll get them. Let me get these out of here. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so fantastic. Yum, yum, yum. This is like a summertime delight, seriously. Okay, now I think I'll put just a touch more basil on this layer because I can and because I love it. And then I'm gonna put on the cheese mixture on top, the cheese and mayo mixture. Okay, I'm gonna get this on top real pretty. It might be a little tricky to spread it around, but you gotta be patient here and we'll get it. Here we go do it that way. I am so anxious to taste this. Wow. Look at how gorgeous this is. My mouth is watering for this. I don't know about you, Eddie. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm gonna put just a little bit more basil on the top. Not too much. I don't want it to burn. Okay, this is ready for the oven. I can't tell you friends how excited I am about this. I cannot wait to eat this. It's gonna be about 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes till this is nice and brown in the oven. I hope I can wait that long. Can you wait, Eddie? I'll have to. <laughs> the smell is fantastic. So we're going in 350 degree oven. We will look at it in about 30 minutes to see how it looks, but it'll probably take about 45. Okay. We'll be back for the tasting. Hey friends, while we're waiting for that pie to bake, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. On YouTube World, it's all about the subscribers. Just push that red button and tell your friends about my videos because if you like them, you know that your friends will too. You've gotta to watch my channel often to see when I post new videos. Woo, look at this, Eddie. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you guys, this thing is beautifully browned. It smells like heaven in my kitchen. I've already sliced a piece for myself. I'm gonna slice a piece here for Eddie who is chomping at the bit here with his mouth watering. <laughs> Cannot wait to get this in my mouth, in my tummy. Oh, look at that. Oh man, that's gorgeous. Dig in, honey. It has been out for a while, so it shouldn't be too hot. Right. Let's give it a taste. Everybody's waiting to hear. <laughs> Mm, mm. Mm, mm. Oh my gosh, it's just fantastic. The flavors in here, the tomatoes are so sweet. The cheeses are so savory and the basil just gives it that extra pop. What do you think, Eddie? Yeah, it's awesome. It, it tastes and looks better than it did in the recipe. Mm. This is fantastic. You guys have got to try this, especially now while tomatoes are abundant. Make sure you click on subscribe and come and visit us often. Check my page off and so you'll see when I post new videos. You guys have a great day. We're going to enjoy this so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.